So true justice means to me, I mean, that could have many different meanings, but for me in particular, I guess being true to who we are as Aboriginal people um, and our connections here. I think our country is the most important, you know, meaning for all of us and um, justice is just, we need to be equal. Um, and I think for Aboriginal people within Central Australia, we definitely, you know, uh, feel a different understanding of the law um, as we were taught growing up. Like what you've done now, we we keep really happy the way you have done it. Not gonna die. Like that. I forgot to explain that plant. It's a healing plant, also, folks. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? 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 What are you get rid of those spirits that you pass through. It just defines us. We're going to live in the white man law and we're going to live in our law. So which side do you think we're going to take? The white man's law or the black fellow law? <laughs> <laughs> so we're fighting against two tides. And this one here got rules. Rules, we break the rules. We're in trouble. Just like normal, where you might going to go and represent people in court. We break the rules, you're in trouble. So we get trouble two ways. Mm. This defines who we are. Dirt. I don't know, this here come from the dirt. That's the law. Dirt. Yeah, we call it in ma. In ma. It's like a powerful moment being a part of something that had, had such rich history of being passed down. We were, dan we were dancing in a, with the backing of language that has been that is thousands and thousands of years old. So in that moment, you have such a, you feel like you have such a connection to um, the history of this continent and the people who have walked on this continent millennia before you. This is called Ermanga, this place. It's got a, this is where we're starting to put our foot in that other language group. This is Pram, Nurija and Aranda, Southern Aranda. Obviously what we're learning about is quite heavy stuff and um, you know there's they're complicated issues with a lot of um, complicated answers you know there's no easy solution to you know how do we make sure that Indigenous people are having the same quality of life as non-Indigenous people and, uh, and how are we making sure that us non-Indigenous people are actually supporting and, and empowering and being led by Indigenous people. But one thing that I think we all reflected on was just having the opportunity to be out here and actually learn from Indigenous people and from elders. And actually you just get like really filled with hope, which is something that's really missing from a lot of mainstream conversations is actually being able to see any, like a future that seems positive because you just see all of the you know, the doom and gloom. Um, but yeah, being able to have the privilege to come out here and learn and just see the joy and the strength is like, it's just been really rewarding and like one of the most, I guess in some ways it shouldn't be unexpected, but I guess to me, it wasn't something I really anticipated, but just being really filled with like hope and joy has been a really powerful thing. So thank you guys for that. is to try bring people together so we can teach you 
about our way, the way we embrace each individual strangers into this country, on our country, so that our behaviour reflects that it doesn't matter who you are, we're still spiritually connected, no matter where we go. But it's about how we stand strong together in what we believe in. And that's where the legal social justice, you probably heard that in the whole week, the way, you know, we're still struggling today just to get our voice heard and also that termination we all want. And I think we need to be more hungry for it. You know, we also need to understand at the end of the day who we are and where we're from. This afternoon, I want you to think about what impact it has for you when you listen and feel. And it's important to understand that it could be an awakening for you to say, oh, that's what it means. Because you know? everyone's on a journey. And whether we're ready or not, that's why listening is so important. We've just had a talk about what's going to happen and I think yeah. we've kind of got a basic agreement but we now have all ANU people and yeah. so maybe if you could just explain in a way however feels right the story of yeah. what, what happened. Yeah, so I mean I'm honoured to be asked to speak on what's been an incredible week but all sitting in the dirt after having the most formative experience I think of at least of my life I can't imagine that people feel too differently on that. Um, Talia said before that, um, who's filming behind the camera, uh, that as if you didn't know each other when you came here. And I think that is how I feel, like, you know, as if, <laughs> given what, you know, the last week has been. Um, so we've built bonds that I think will last for a long, long, long time. And we've built bonds amongst among each other and with people that we've met along the way. And that's been truly special. And when we went into that art shop, um, we were, uh, which is incredible. And there's amazing artwork there from people in the community here. And one particular painting, when we were told the story, that painting stood out because it captured everything about this course and what it's meant to be and the experience that we've had. And I think everyone was struck by the power of that narrative um, and of the, um, the power of the, of the woman behind the painting as well. The, the four themes that they you know, have chosen, true justice, uh, radical hope, um, conflict our world. and our world, I think are all captured so beautifully in, in that piece of artwork. Um, it's a learning exercise for us too. We're learning from you. And, you know, you're going to be great leaders. And I said that to a couple of people who said, you're going to be the, a leader one day. And I, said, oh, I just want to be a lawyer sort of thing. But let's hope that you become prime minister. You know. uh, maybe federal members of parliament. But like I said to the little group today, we've given you the ammunition. Mm. We want you to go back to where you come from and when you get into um, an important position, if you put those bullets that we've given you in a gun and fire them at the world. Mm. And be our friends, our advocates, and um, challenge people. Um, I think you've been, you've faced a few cha challenges since you've been here mm. and you've survived and survived with humour and understanding and um, appreciated it. Just before that I was sitting in the dirt um, and I had my shoes off and I was just kind of covered in red sand and I had this moment of like real peace and just feeling so grounded um, and then a few minutes later when Uncle Mario was speaking he was he he said a line and he said the dirt is the law, like th this, this, this country is the law. And it was just the first moment that I had where we've been learning about deep listening and how to kind of deep listen. It was the first moment that I had where I was like, oh, that's what it is. Like law isn't, it doesn't have to be what's kind of just taught to you and you have to respect it's what you like, 
feel and your gut tells you. Um, obviously, I'll never understand it. Or you know, maybe you'll we'll never understand it to the complexity and the intensity that Uncle Mario was kind of referring to. But I got this little glimpse of insight into that, and it was just like the most incredible moment. The many different experiences you can have as an Aboriginal person and how there's not just one experience, there's not just one definition of Aboriginality and there's not one expression of the trauma that colonisation um, has done. And so, yeah, we basically went into it a bit in our personal stories, but it was a really powerful way to kind of connect with our identity and be like, there's no one way to be Aboriginal. And we're basically concluded very something we're all very proud to be.